The wonderful thing about this understanding of energy and how energy function is, not only can we see it in technology, but we can see it in ourselves. Yep. You see. So if we learn, okay, you know, here's this wonderful coil that Tesla made, invented, and it can transmit power. But how does it work? Anybody know how it works? Yeah. No. I'm going to hold this up, and David's going to help explain it. This, the one at the bottom, see the one at the very bottom? There's a coil down there at the bottom, big fat one, with a big fat wire. That's called the primary. Okay. Oh, you mean it's encased in the white? Or, oh, no, you that mean, right there. Oh, okay. See it right there? That's the primary, that's the second I was one. looking at the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. okay. How many think there's a wire that connects the primary to the secondary? There's no wires. Yeah. What happens is, we got this one plugged into the wall, got all this fun business here going on. It sends a charge, and this primary steps up that uh, electricity, okay, to a very high degree. This coil right here is in resonance, or it's in tune with this primary. There's no wires between them, but because they're in tune with one another, it inducts that electricity, and then you'll see the fun sparks that come off the top, all right? It's just like, well, most of us here look like we remember what it was like growing up and watching TV where you had to change the dial by hand and then you had to work with the antenna to get it if it wasn't, you know, in tune with the, the station. It's the same principle, essentially. Well, we work the same way. What we want to learn with our mind is how can we attune our consciousness to that higher frequency, that higher source, so that our lives can be much more creative and beneficial and constructive. Positive. So, well, so uh, before we turn this on and put 150,000 volts into my body, um, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, nuclear uh, reactors. And we're seeing, we're seeing some of them failing in Japan. Well, Tesla tried to point us in a direction in physics toward you understanding energy and vibration, right? <coughs> and Einstein came along and added other dimensions to that equation and then science went down another avenue that was incorrect where we smash the atom to get energy out of it and the what unarius unarius explains that what, all atoms are connected to their higher self which exists in the fourth dimension so all atoms including all molecules the sun has energy pouring from the fourth dimension into the, this dimension. So this dimension called the third dimension is sustained by higher dimensions above it. The fifth, the sixth, the seventh, right on into the heart of infinity. <coughs> so we're all functioning and living and incarnating from life to life in an infinite universe, right? <coughs> so what happens when they experiment with nuclear fission or fusion for that matter is they're <coughs> breaking the uranium atom from its higher self and this 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 is the pulse of creation that they're experimenting with and they don't know what they're doing it's very dangerous so all that energy that's supplied from the vortex the interdimensional vortex comes slamming into this dimension that's what's so destructive about it because People, do, the scientists don't understand about everything has to have a higher self. Human beings, of course, that's the most developed aspect of that is in human beings, where they have people like, you know, Jesus of Nazareth and Leonardo da Vinci and Einstein. So, what we're seeing is slowly the, these uh, isotopes, radioisotopes, especially plutonium and uranium, being severed from their higher self. And so now there's a residue, there's a side effect. It's poisonous to human beings. It's called radioactive fuel rods, right? So where, what are they going to do with it now they got this poison? We're going to put it in the bottom of the ocean? Out of sight, out of mind. You know, it can't be doing any harm down there, They're right? They're going to bury it in Yucca Valley? <laughs> what are they going to store it right there at the generator? So, you see, if science could just back up and look at the whole cosmic viewpoint, they could see, wait a minute, this, this, is, uh, this is a negative situation here. There needs to be, we need to go back to what Tesla planted the seeds for and rethink all this and go down a different road. 
And he already demonstrated that energy, you don't need wires to transmit energy. And so nuclear power stations are extremely dangerous. I hope mankind is learning a valuable lesson from Japan. I know it seems negative on the surface, but I think there's a positive lesson that we're all going to learn. It's not to build more nuclear. And look, it's already got a negative bias of the whole thing. The people who run lie to the public. They lie about how safe it is. They lie about how good the uh, concrete and, the, and how it's been constructed to withstand so many uh, whatever, Richter scale vibrations or whatever. <laughs> you can't trust them. The one where, you know, reactor four is in a serious situation. It may go to a, a <laughs> lethal form of uh, radiation. We don't know. We just hope that they'll gain, gain control. But why keep going down this road and building nuclear reactors that are dangerous to human beings? They're going to pollute this planet. Why keep going down that road? So I hope you're all on the same wavelength, that we, we stop doing this and look into alternatives. And we're going to demonstrate, Kevin and I are going to demonstrate a little bit. This is just a sample, simple little demonstration, OK? This is what Tesla was able to do in his, uh, what is it, his Manhattan um, laboratory. He was able to light up lights without any wires. People, with visitors, would go in there and they would be dumbfounded and amazed. Uh, and he had all these high frequency generators lighting everything without wires. And he said the world could have this. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what the future technology is going to be able to provide for our world. Um, what else? What's our next experiment here? Um, but, uh, before we go on any further, yeah. everybody in the front row smell this? Yeah. Ozone. Ozone. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I, always, I, I love relating this because uh, at the time Tesla was doing all this inventing, guess who his favorite friend was? Mark Samuel Clemens. Mark, yeah. Mark Twain. Mark Twain right. And what did Mark Twain love to do? You ever see him in a picture without one of those big huge stogies in his hand? <laughs> Cigars? Yeah. So uh, this also can kill smoke. That's what it does. So Tesla used this uh, to actually knock out the smoke from the cigars and the cigarettes and everything that everybody smoked at that time, which by the way, Tesla recognized as well, was a horrible vice as he termed it. Uh, it was a, a moral degrading vice, I believe is the way he put it. 